Welcome to CS50 Finance. Congratulations, though, on finishing all of the CP sets for CS50. Now we move on to the web portion of the course. Moving away from C, we're going to be dealing with PHP. And you'll find that there are going to be a lot of similarities in the logic of things. But in terms of the syntax of things, there's going to be some differences. Firstly, in PHP, variables, they start with a dollar sign before their name. And they're weakly typed. That means that unlike C, you don't need to worry about setting something equal to a string or an integer or a specific data type. You can just assign the value. PHP also has associative arrays. You could simply define an array like you would in C. Or in PHP, you can also assign a word to an index, and that will correspond to a value. So if you actually define index A as 1, B is 2, and C is 3, then your array at index A would give you 1. Then we're also going to take advantage of the fact that you can mix HTML code with PHP code. So within your HTML blocks, if you include in block with a question mark PHP, then you can put PHP code in it and it'll execute within your HTML. Now when you're making a website, you want to make sure that the appropriate files and folders are chmodded, or rather that the permissions for those are appropriate. So for all folders, you'll want to chmod 711 for your folder. All images, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, chmod 644 with the file name. 644 because users shouldn't execute an image. PHP, chmod 600 file, because you don't want users to see your PHP code. If you want to chmod everything in a given directory, then just add a wildcard star after the name of the directory. And so if you chmod 644 for everything within the image directory, then it'll be readable by everyone. So let's look at the distribution code. The distribution code has three folders, includes, public, and templates. The includes directory has three files, config.php, constants.php, and functions.php. Then your public directory. That's where the PHP files will go that have the logic. And those PHP files, they're going to call render on given template files. More on this later, but remember that basically any file if within your public directory, that's what users will visit. But you'll actually never see anything inside your PHP file. You'll see things in the template PHP files. So when a template file is rendered by a controller in public, the public folder, it'll replace the placeholders for variables with the variables in the associative array that render passes them in. So templates will have information, display forms, things like that. OK, so let's look at functions.php. Functions.php has a bunch of functions that you'll find quite useful. Apologize, dump, logout, lookup, which returns a stock symbol, query, which executes a SQL statement, redirect, which redirects the user to a different web page, and then render, which outputs a template. So let's look at an example of how you can render a file. Here I have hello.php within my public directory and hello.php within my templates directory. Now don't be confused by the fact that they have the same name. They have different paths, therefore they're different files. So hello.php within the public directory, that's going to be my controller. So within that code, I'm going to call render on template slash hello.php, passing in, in my associative array name as my index and milo as the value. So then in template slash hello.php, it has a placeholder for the name passed in by the associative array. That'll essentially replace that segment with milo because milo was passed in as the value. Now, if you want multiple values to be passed in, that's great too. You can pass in multiple values in your associative array. So here I have a message as well as a name, and those are both displayed in my template. So what do you need to do for CS50 Finance? Well, you'll have to implement register, which basically is going to be a series of PHP files that allows the user to register for the CS50 Finance site. Quote will allow a user to look up a quote and see how much that is. Portfolio will display to the user what stocks they currently have in their portfolio. Buy allows them to buy a stock. Sell, therefore, allows them to sell one. 
then they should also be able to see the history of all of their transactions. And in addition, you'll have your choice of implementing an extra feature for the site. So let's tackle register first. Register should allow the user to register with the site. So how do we do this? Well, first we'll need to display a form allowing them to register, check whether they submitted valid passwords, and then if it's all successful, then add the user to the database. So first, let's display the form. You'll need to make a template, perhaps registerform.php, with a form that submits to register.php, the controller. The register.php controller can then create the account. It's going to be very similar to loginform.php, so perhaps you might want to copy those. Adding in a password confirmation field to your form where the user should be able to enter their password in again. Then you can check whether the user submitted valid passwords. You need to make sure that first both aren't blank, else you should apologize. Then you need to make sure that the password and the confirmation are the exact same thing, else you should apologize again. Here, to compare strings in PHP, you can just use the equals operator. So goodbye to string compare. Now what does apologize mean? Apologize is a function in includes slash functions.php. Passing in a message will display a page that displays your message. And if you look at apologize function, really it just renders apology.php. So now we're ready to add the user to the database, provided that the username that they submitted isn't blank. Otherwise, we're going to apologize. Now, usernames are a unique field in the database users that you have in your SQL database. That means that you can't have two users with the same username. Makes enough sense, but how do you check for that? Well, query will return false on failure. So if you set your result of query and check that to false, well, then an error has occurred, such as a duplicate username. But if the result isn't false, then we can insert that new user into our table. Using the following SQL command, we'll insert in me as a new user with a password hash and an initial amount of cash. And that'll insert a new row into users. But that's in SQL. How do you execute a SQL query in PHP? In PHP, the query function takes placeholders. So you can type in your string using question marks as placeholders, and then after that string, you can have commas separating the values that you want to substitute in. Very much like the printf function, except instead of percent %s or percent %d, you can just use a question mark because variables are weakly typed. And this works for any SQL query. Question mark, you can have as many as you'd like as long as you have the same number of variables passed in after that string. So finally, once we insert the user and update that user in our database, then we can log them in. We want to log them in automatically. So just as soon as you insert them in, you can check for their user ID by executing the following query. Select last insert ID as ID. That stores the result from that query inside of rows. But Rows is actually going to be an array, so you need to access the first element of that array and then the ID, because that's an associated with array. Great. And then you have their ID successfully registering from the site, and they can proceed from there.